sorry it's been a little bit. Sorry for the delay. Our presenter is um, at the zoo. start the recording. So hello everyone and welcome to day three of Moodle Moot for 2020. We started in 2011 and we're nine years later. <laughs> so time flies when it comes to things on the internet from my experience anyways. So um, you've got full rights. I can stop screen sharing and um, you can start. And then I'll introduce you from my phone, if that's okay. So let me stop screen sharing, there we go. So um, you can screen share Hi there, everyone. Good to see you. It's so nice to see everybody, but I don't want to see myself that large. So hopefully I can get rid of that spotlight. There we go. So um, where's our speaker? Actually, our second speaker is here, <laughs> not our first. So let me just uh, see what's going on there in the chat. Yes, map stamp is on the map, so to speak. Okay, so Edith, I see you've got some questions. And if you don't see anything, you will, you will. Technology is funny with that. You know, sometimes um, our browsers just deceive us and we don't see images, we don't see things. So um, don't worry, as Peter always says, everything's gonna be all right. Right, Peter? <laughs> so we're waiting for our presenter. Let me see, um, maybe our presenter is here and I just can't see her. I gave uh, the wrong person, um, but you'll have it later on. Maybe you can give your session now. 
actually. Um, Prab Hashimi, what do you think? Because our presenter seems to be late. I guess she's um, being held up. So I gave you um, the right. Would you be ready to present now? You just have to screen share and then we can switch <laughs> if that's okay with you. Let me know, or maybe you're getting ready. Oh, there, you're so fast. Okay, all right. Without words, there we go. All right, so we're switching with our second presentation. Well, actually, yeah, we're switching. The two presentations. And I'll introduce our speaker. Let me just get that. How's everybody? How are you doing? Feel free to use the chat box as we go for questions, comments, to stay awake if you're tired. That's what I used to do. Chat box is a great way to um, stay focused. Okay, so let me get started. Um, Bagya Praghashini, I hope I pronounced that correctly, has been a faculty in uh, Jazan University at Farisan University College in the KSA, which is the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Her PhD is in English Linguistics from KL University, India. She has 18 years experience teaching English in India, Eritrea, and Saudi Arabia. She was the first online IELTS trainer from South India. She has nine research papers to her credit. Her interesting areas of study are research methodology, ecolinguistics, that's fascinating. That is really something. Stylistics, psycholinguistics, which is also amazing, neurolinguistics, I love these, and social linguistics. If you're an English teacher, you probably appreciate, or a language teacher, these very much. Uh, she had experience using several virtual platforms such as WizIQ, JUMP, JUSCR, and Blackboard, and so on. So it gives me great pleasure, great to see you. It's not the first time that our presenter is presenting at uh, these conferences, online conferences, and it's a pleasure. As always, I'm gonna put myself in the background. I still don't hear you. So I'm looking, but I, no, I think I heard something. So I'm not sure if you're muted. Let me check. Oh yes, you are. Um, I see that. I don't know if I can, I can't unmute you because you're a presenter. I mean, you're a co-host. Do you want me to take it away and maybe add it back? Oh, there, I can see you now. Are you in as two people? Let me see if I can. I don't know if I can unmute you. I would have to take away your rights um, to unmute you, I think. I'm not sure. Oh, there, I, you're, you're, you're good. You're good, you're good. <laughs> okay, so I'll put myself in the background and you can go ahead. Thank you once again for joining us. It's great to see you smiling. Thank you, Dr. Nelly. Uh, shall I start my presentation? Yes, please do. Okay. And thank you for being flexible. That okay. really is wonderful. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. My name is Bhagya Prabhashini Shili. And today's my topic is balkanization of psycholinguistic interface. Before starting, let me know, let me tell you a few things about me. I'm working as a language trainer 
for Jazan University and I am also working as course coordinator for listening group. This is from university side. I am working for quality as head of standard four and the other things are from my college, head of research committee, assistant head of lab committee, assistant head of co-curricular committee, head of attendance committee, member of exit exam committee, member of teaching and learning committee. I am living in Farsan. This Farsan is, uh, it's an island. It's in between Africa and Middle East. That means Asia and Africa in between two continents. It's a very pleasant area as all of you know, all the islands are very um, scarcely, I can't say scarcely, thinly populated. So it's very pleasant to live in here. So my academical, academic credentials here, I'm a member of Linguistic Society of India and member of Online Language Learning Research Network. Before starting my presentation, I would like to give a big thank to Dr. Nelly Duish for her dedicated work because I know I have been working with her since 2012. See, I wrote here Moodle Basics. This is Moodle, um, Moodle Mood Virtual Conference 2012. This was my topic. And the reflection of e-portfolios in supporting of lifelong learning. This is MMVC 2013. This was my topic. So on and off, I have been working with her. I like her methodology uh, specifically to say her ideology in expanding the knowledge online by organizing the conferences, by developing the websites. If you go through the website, it is very clear. Uh, there is a lot of stuff for the professional development. There are many courses, paid courses, free courses. What else? Um, ample resources are there for the teachers and teacher trainers as well. So I think I strongly believe that she is um, an impeccable personality. Thank you once again, uh, Dr. Nelly. I'm going to my topic now. Today's topic is balkanization of psycholinguistic interface. I don't know what's the problem, one second. So why did I choose this topic? Let me explain the meaning of these words first, then I will go to the concept. Balkanization, it is a geopolitical term. Its meaning according to the Mariam Webster's dictionary is to break up that means it's like a boundary, an edge, uh, when we divide something. Now let's come to the second word, psycholinguistic. Psycholinguistics is a branch. It's a study. It is about the study of linguistic behavior and psychological processes. Now let's come to the third word, interface. What is interface? I have taken a language example here. We have prose and poetry, two sections in English. Prose means it is, everybody know that it is with sentences and paragraphs, but poetry, it is with some emotions and in verses. See, I wrote here another one, prose poetry. Prose poetry, this is not prose, not poetry, but it has both the features. It is written in lines, but with some characteristic features of poetry like parataxis, imagery, that means like uh, emotional effects. So this is very close to prose and poetry, which is like connecting the two sections, which we can say this is Prose poetry is the interface between prose and poetry. 
I have taken another dichotomy here, conscious versus unconscious. Conscious learning versus unconscious learning. Conscious knowledge versus unconscious knowledge. Here, this is not exam. Quiz question one. This I prepared for the participants. I want to make their work easy because after attending this presentation, uh, this conference, you're going to go with reflections, you're going to give some feedback. So when you are going to give the feedback, if you go with the quiz questions from my presentation, so it is going to be easy for you. If you want to add some more about the software, it's going to be a great reflection. Quiz question one. Can you learn something without consciousness? Can, consci can something be learned without using your consciousness? This is the question. You need to go with my presentation or Google for the answers. But Google, there is a problem. If you Google, Google, Google shows that nothing can be learned without consciousness. Learning, it can be done by consci unconsciousness. So you will get the answer like consciousness is needed if you want to learn something. So the same Google says, another one the human brain it has the ability of cognition it can cognate something what is cognition learning from surroundings you can learn from surroundings so come with me through the presentation to get the right answer because we have a couple of answers here because without unconsciousness, if you learn something, someone says it is with unawareness, maybe it is unintention, but whether it stays in the memory or not, we are not sure of. So I'm going to go with the study of the theories related to it. Schema theory. Only three words they will tell the meaning of what is schema theory. Discrete, perceptual, motor skills. Discrete, separate, various. Perceptual, what you are percepting. The perception happens by means of senses. Through the vision or by oral or by smell, sensing, all these things. So you are percepting something through your senses, you are getting some message from, uh, from your vision. So when you understood something, you want to reply for that, you want to respond for that. How do you respond? You may speak out, you may send the message through your eyes, or you may wave your hand, that means you are using your body muscles. So you are percepting, that means understanding something through the senses, and then you are giving the message, you are responding by using body muscles. You are moving, you are speaking. These are motor skills. Now let's come to Adam's theory of skills. It has only two traces, easy to understand. Memory trace and perceptual trace. Memory trace means it is choosing the response initiation function. The function is, it is with the starting of the response. And perceptual means it is, it, this function is a record. It's a record of past movements after many practices. All right, next let's come to Anderson's ACTR theory, adaptive 
control of thought um rational theory this is a skill acquisition theory when you are going to acquire a skill you need to undergo these three stages for example you are learning to ride a bicycle or driving a car you need to undergo these three processes number 1 acquiring declarative knowledge you need to acquire the knowledge and this is declarative knowledge the knowledge behind the riding or driving number 2 learning the formal procedure of the knowledge this is procedure formal procedure this is also knowledge and then again you are coming for acquiring the procedure of the knowledge first you are acquiring declarative knowledge last acquiring the procedural knowledge right let's come to uh let me explain one thing one point here during this adams theory of skills acquisition what is happening means when you are learning you are getting the knowledge and then you are practicing the skill so consciousness is needed but after getting the knowledge and getting the skill you don't need to use the knowledge every minute while driving a car that means you don't need the consciously accessible knowledge for the skills conscious learning what is conscious learning there are many arguments in the literature some scientists say that consciousness needs attention not always attention sometimes you may say you need awareness individual awareness this awareness at higher levels you can say that it is explicit learning rebor is a popular scientist about this conscious and unconscious learning he explained conscious learning goes to conscious knowledge that means it turns into conscious knowledge if you practice with these kinds of learning habits what are those learning habits more focus more attention more suitable environment if you practice in this environment using these learning habits definitely explicit learning or conscious learning is going to be a conscious knowledge example for this was given as checking for the answers within the passage if you were given a reading passage and you are going through checking for the answers the questions followed there the next one is bars he explained this conscious learning or explicit learning both are same different words so he gave only one thing immediate perceptual world that means explicit explicit learning it involves immediate perceptual world what is their immediate immediately sur surrounding by you what you can percept easily your emotions your actions your attributions and your body feelings and inner feelings all these will come under that including memory so the example given here is memorization of vocabulary when you are writing the test you are going to write a test you are memorizing the vocabulary for the test then this is the best example given by bars whatever the examples given by rebor and bars both are coming under explicit learning let us see what is unconscious learning we can also say this is implicit learning 
I told you before, Reber studied both. If we take one scientist, the scientists or psychologists, they study only one way, but he studied both. He said unconscious learning, it helps in acquiring the knowledge. How? By using self-regulating from the individual, self-regulating conscious attempts. The individual knows that he is doing this. So when there are conscious attempts, which are regulated by oneself, then it is, it leads to acquire the knowledge because the learning process is implicit learning. Some psychologists say that it is because of unawareness. Some say that it is incidental, whatever it is, but it is with conscious attempts made by the individual. Another psychologist, Bruce, he explained it as normal unintended learning. Reber conducted one experiment with a list of words and its associations. And he said that after that, this implicit learning is going to be a knowledge and memory. For that, he has given some examples like the intellect of music. All of us, we know we have knowledge of music, but we accept the music professionals others just we hum the songs or we sing the songs without intention we learn that we acquired that so these are the examples taking instinctive decision if you think about something that is different this is instinctive decision making this is also coming under implicit learning the other two examples are language comprehension and utterances and language production these are also implicit learning let us see the last example is again explained by natasha we can take that example for natasha natasha also she is uh, ex she explained unconscious learning as a default system in the human mind it's a default system by default, we acquire something from the environment. We gain something from the environment. This is, that means we learn succession of speech sounds. The example, I'm going to the top again, utterances and language production. Let's see the features of unconscious implicit learning. It is highly effective with effective performance, but it takes a long time to reach that stage. And another feature, the acquisition mechanisms are not at all typically associated with processes normally thought of as smart. They are independent. This implicit learning is robust. The robustness is the main feature of implicit learning. Are these only two? I told it's a dichotomy. Unconscious, conscious, prose, poetry, implicit, explicit, formal, informal. Are these only two there? Are there any other things that are helping for learning? There are knowing, awareness, noticing, detection, cognition, all these are going to help for learning. Knowing, it means being aware of something. Awareness at low levels means you are noticing something. Noticing with your eyes means it is visual attention. Visual attention is equal to low levels of learning. 
if the low if there is low level of attention it leads to low level of learning suppose if the attention is confirmed confirmed attention then you can call it as detection so detection it leads to cognition all are related just there is a variation in their levels so attention is detection but detection is not awareness but we studied their awareness is noticing and noticing is attention at higher levels so these are related so what makes it different from one to another if you take two like attention and awareness these two are very close to each other but they differ at various levels of noticing the level of noticing is different from attention to awareness noticing something you are noticing something means it is the beginning of learning this is for the participants quiz question 2 do you think consciousness is a need to access the data or info of implicit learning you learn something without intention that is through implicit learning you learn something maybe this is info or maybe this is data whatever it is do you think to acquire to access that data do you need consciousness do you need consciousness to access the knowledge what you got from implicit learning this is the question here another question but don't worry this is not a quiz question it is not a quiz question i would like to say something before reading this question because i would like to say the reason behind the question otherwise we can't understand it clearly it is going to be vague so let me say that to you during childhood this is my assumption during childhood if a child happened to see a mistakely a mistake sentence or words grammatically mistaken words or sentences or the child happened to hear a wrong phrase every day what happens obviously the child is going to learn the same mistake from the surroundings and it is going to be continued throughout the life if the child doesn't have any opportunity to realize that he had been practicing the mistake so now let's come to the question has the child been mastering the mistake by using several attempts without knowing that he is practicing an error has the child been mastering the mistake by using several attempts without knowing that he is practicing an error it happens because all the people they won't study english and they won't study grammar there are various subjects maybe they are at good position but they did that it didn't happen for them to come across to realize their mistakes so obviously it is going to be with the person throughout the life so this is my question let us see the answer for this the solutions the possible solutions maybe the answer is yes or it is no 
has the child been mastering the mistake yes or no either is or no or like interface in between is or no you can see this the answer laid in between so middle or maybe both 50 50 percent yes and no if the, there is another possibility no as no no maybe another answer another solution any other solution let us see what are the possible solutions other solutions the likelihoods subconsciousness i will give you one example for this subconsciousness if you acquire a language acquire that is going to be with subconsciousness if you learn that is going to be conscious okay acquisition of language is a subconscious process and learning a language is a conscious process maybe this might be the answer who knows let's come to second option both unconscious and conscious if someone wants to excel their second language around the globe the most popularly known second language is english so if you want to acquire if you want to master the language if you want to excel the language you need to undergo both the processes and conscious and conscious to learn lsrw skills and the sub skill grammar as well all right next let's come to sublimination process what is this it's a mental process it is below the perception level perception if you see something you are perceiving something if you smell something you are understanding something below than this so the knowledge what we are acquiring through this learning is negligible can be counted waste that means too 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 less example for this is <clears throat> if you play something while sleeping you are sleeping but you played you played cricket which wasn't played before by you so are you going to be the cricket player then no you may not be having any knowledge of that so this is just negligible knowledge the last question for the participants quiz question 3 i'm sorry sorry can the implicit knowledge be accessed at any time can the implicit knowledge the knowledge which is acquired through implicit knowledge implicit learning can it be accessed any time will it be possible yes or no let's see what theory say about that allen and reber they studied this implicit knowledge is robust it won't go anywhere you can forget for weeks and sometimes years even the next one a reber individual study he said implicit learning gives some amount of knowledge that knowledge is at the deepest levels from the root onwards next one pearl 
he explained implicit learning gives you implicit knowledge if it is staying in the memory then we can say that as implicit memory if you learn something unconsciously it doesn't need any effort to become implicit memory it stays in your mind right way right away the last study is by freud he did a ground breaking work and he said this implicit knowledge memory learning all these are at high level the examples given are decision making and creativity let's go to the experience or the examples illustrations given by reber reber observed i told he studied both implicit and explicit learning he has given many illustrations from the real life tasks and he explained that the many of the real life tasks constitutes both conscious and unconsciously acquired knowledge that means with mixed learning processes okay i'm going to show you one example the difference between both the answer if you are ready you can give your answer in the chat box otherwise just say your answer to yourself did you take your breakfast yes or no sorry this is lunch time for me lunch is over tea time okay let us take did you take your tea or snacks either yes or no you can say yes or no so it is going to be immediate answer the next question when irrespective of your answer whether it is yes or no i am going to answer you that what did you have for your breakfast it's not that easy to give yes or no you will take some seconds of time to respond to the question that is the difference between conscious and unconsciousness let's come to inference this is the answer for the question which is not a quiz question this is the result exposure of knowledge let us take esl and efl countries where the english is learned as um foreign language or where it is learned as um second language and in some places it's going to be third language as well the exposure of knowledge to the learners must be current it must be correct if not correct there is a possibility for the learner to carry out the mistake throughout the life so what language holding public places should be checked out recheck the language on the public places holdings re verification of the language on societal shops by the language experts should be done this is my suggestion let us see what is there in the balkanization in the title balkanization division the border the edge the two studies here explicit and implicit there are numerous studies in this field if you study explicit or implicit you will get hundreds of theories hundreds of studies for this dichotomy if you take one problem or task or experiment keep in view of explicit go go through the study research about it and then write a paper or present something in the conference or write a book you feel that is correct 
if you write that same in view of implicit then also it's correct but i told you reber studied both when he studied both implicit learning and explicit learning he told that there is some other section lies in between these two dichotomies one section is explicit another one is implicit already he used there are many real life tasks with these mixed learning methods processes so when he observed that he found an interface area between explicit and implicit which is covering both the features and he emphasized that there is a need of study in this area there is a lot of scope for the research in this area nowadays the technology became handy for all the researchers so for linguistic study as well we have numerous softwares so here i just i took for example for one slide i want to prepare uh, the research software which is available for the linguistic studies the first one is gpl 3.0 uh, license this is useful for the language analysis prod software i work with this very interesting and easy free open software you can just type it and then you can download it you can work on it it is useful to get the spectrum i wrote a paper using this software it's very interesting uh, if you want to read uh, go to research gate and if you type my name you will get it prod software this is about that you can draw the spectrum using this software by pronouncing something next e prime this is the psycholinguistic software which i am going to explain later and baseling and citlink these are the softwares by chicago university uh, one is for data and the citlink is for bibliography and there are ample numerous softwares for translation you might be using i'm sure there are many available online text vocalization and the reverse speech to text many are available available online like uh, audacity martian this is an interesting software it is um, just uh, it covers only the european languages but this is the only software which is available study to study the environment of ancient languages now let's go to corpus linguistics no linguistics branch has these many number of software tools 236 software tools are available for the branch of corpus linguistics please give a try i am going to e prime because this is related to the study e prime is a graphic interface it has a a virtual application that we call e studio this e studio uh, it has two important features one is concepts another one is time what are concepts the lists processor slide all these these concepts are designed in simple way and very easy to use it i tried it uh, but uh, e prime 3 it has two versions one is professional it is behind the paywall but uh, which is uh, the general normal one it is open resource you can download and you can use it you need to go into the website i will show you the website also so the concepts are too general and then simple and easy to use and it has simple to complex 
experimental designs anyone can use if you are a new researcher or scholar you can go with the simple things and if you are advanced researcher you can even customize your experiment settings let's come to time especially this e prime software is used for the accuracy of time it calculates the exact time used by the participant to solve the task or to attend the, to attempt the answer or to uh, complete the experiment whatever it is whatever you design for the experiment it calculates exactly with millisecond precision so this is the um, important feature of e prime because it is mainly used for time related experiments let's go to applications uh, excuse me for um, interrupting our yeah. time was up um, about uh, uh, um, five minutes ago can i take five minutes to wind yeah, up the so session because we started late that's okay if if sure, you could, sure uh, sure i can come in because you've yeah. got about 20 more, 17 more right. slides. Right. So we're not going right. to, sorry. Right. Thank you. Welcome. The application is having six applications are there for this E prime. Let us see this E prime studio E studio. This is having drop down and uh, um, uh, drop down options to work on it. And this eBasic is a visual basic. This is the language scripting. And eRun, when the experimental design is over, with one click, this eRun runs into eBasic script. And merge, when the participant is completing the task, immediately it, can, it uh, adds up to the data. And then data aid, this is an application uh, for the management utility. You can edit and you can analyze and you can um, delete the things, whatever you want to do. And e-recovery, the deleted or corrupted files can be, and sometimes you may lose some files, those can be recovered. And these, these five are the important things, interface objects, trial procedure, creating new attributes and experiment. These are the important things to design the basic experiment. Let us see, this is this blank space. Without this timeline, this we can call it as session prop. And this is a toolbox which contain objects in it. And here you can see some one window. This is data window. When one participant is doing the data, when it completes immediately, the data can be automatically, it will be displayed here. And this is another window, advisor window. If the user or the participant whoever faces any problem, this, it will be highlighted here so that it will be solved out later for the best practices. And let's come to this thing. In this session proc, if you use this timeline and if you keep these objects, then it is going to be the workspace. These windows are resized and it can be moved for the convenience. And from the toolbox, you can see here um, some the procedure, list objects, slide, text object, feedback. These are important things to organize the experiment. The first two procedure and list objects are for organization by the user and slide, text objects and feedback are seen by the participant. So this is experiment explore. If you click here, it will be opened. It has the complete procedure. You can see the procedure this way here and how to add the objects. From this toolbox, you can directly drag these objects into the area workspace or you can add it to the Excel and explore. Both ways will work out. You can right click and delete the objects or you can use the reference option to recollect, recover it again. And the sample size is very important thing here. 
when you are taking the objects from this toolbox here and then sorry these... again we've got four minutes before the next session can you wrap it up please yeah thank so you these we've got objects... your powerpoint we uh the participants will be able to go through it so okay 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 i'm going to wind up this is the test here so you can see the display of the test like this and these are the websites if you want to study more about this software thanks for the time given thanks for the opportunity dr nelly thank you thank you so much and i'm really sorry about the time uh, okay. we will check it definitely check it and um give you feedback on it thank you thank you so much everyone we're going to go on to the next session um see you there and i hope to see you there as well thank you